Hey everybody, welcome to the Rob and Mike show. I am Rob. And I'm Mike. Okay, today we are excited about having our very first guest on the show. It is Maria Redden, who works here at CRI. And Maria, what is it that you're going to be talking to us about today? Um, I'm going to be talking about our new program we're starting up. It's going to be called Peer Mentor Program. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. Right now we have three pairs. Um, they're starting off slowly, but they're slowly getting into it. So it's okay. going to be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, what is what is peer mentoring? What is that? <clears throat> well, I try to match up people with like the same kind of disabilities, same kind of lifestyle, or um, wherever they are in life, like age group too. Um, it helps them connect with people, it gets them out of the house, and they both work on goals that they can accomplish, and like not hard goals, but goals that are reasonable and they could do. Um, a lot of times we want to get people out of their house so they're not alone, depressed, or anything like that. So we ask them, you know, go to events and meet new people, and being with somebody else sometimes helps uh, not feel alone. And, isolated so we match them up we send them out and um, integrate into the community and then they come back with the goals that they met right. so so Maria actually started working on this probably about almost a year ago I believe and uh, being a case manager we we're looking at doing something uh, new and different one of the um, uh, core services of a Center for Independent Living like we are is peer counseling peer support Sure. And we thought, you know, let's start this volunteer peer peer mentoring program. And Maria has done a ton of work, uh, uh, done a lot of research, and put together manuals and, and um, uh, handbooks, uh, handbooks, <laughs> yeah. and, and a, a, a course of action that's going to be accomplished by a set date. You know, every year, so we're going to do stuff like that, where she's going to say, okay, by this date, we're going to have this many uh, uh, goals accomplished, and by this date, we're going to have so many uh, mentor-mentee um, relationships. And what we're trying to do, and I, one of the reasons I, I like having Marie on today, is we are we want to explain what this program is and how uh, how we want to get people involved in it and we want to grow it a little bit. Sure. And I know you know peer mentoring. A lot of people think, oh, it's just it's just me talking to somebody, but sometimes that's what you need. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, that's right. I, I was we were, we were chatting prior to coming on the show here, and I said uh, when I was in the hospital, first injured, maybe not first injured, but after a while. Uh, you know, still confused about what is going on. I, here I am, I broke my neck, I don't know what's going on. Somebody in the hospital, whether it was a counselor there or a nurse or a doctor or whatever it might have been, um, had somebody who had gone through the uh, the, the um, rehabilitation process who, came, who they had come in to talk to me. That's not for everybody, but I think they gauge every person individually. They came in and talked to me and said, hey, listen, here's what you can expect. You're going to go through this, 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 and this. And you have to remember that every injury is not the same. So I wasn't going to get the same benefits that that person did, or perhaps I was going to do a lot more than that person. Sure. So you, you really don't know. And you, can't, you can say, here's what you're going to expect. It's not saying, hey, you're going to be up walking, or you're going to be doing this, right. or you're going to be doing that. It's you have to do a lot of hard work. Um, there, there's going to be obstacles in your way, uh, starting now for the rest of your life. And you know it's good to talk to somebody about how you overcome those obstacles. Well, I remember uh, <laughs> I was I was injured in 1981, and I was in the hospital. And some guy, he was uh, he had quadriplegia, and his name was John. And he came in, he wanted to talk to me. Really nice guy. I threw him out of the room because yeah. I wasn't interested, mm -hmm. right? And because my head was just. So upside down mm -hmm. and spinning, yeah, that I didn't want to hear about life in a wheelchair. Right. And yeah, I think this program is so important, okay, because when you're first injured, or even if you're not injured, you have a congenital disability, okay, all you hear from people and all you're telling yourself is, here's the list of things I can't do, okay? And it's so important uh, to have someone who says to you, look, I've been there, or maybe our disabilities aren't the same, but we have a lot of things in common. Mm -hmm. And here's what you can do. You may do it differently. Right. Stay positive. Uh, that's right. Yeah. And you can still have a lot of fun doing it. Because when you get to rehab, you're going to talk to a quote-unquote shrink. 
okay? And they have a reputation still that, you know, well, I don't want to talk to that person because I'm not crazy, you know, and there's nothing wrong with me. You know? But if you're talking to somebody who's been there, okay, the walls come down a little bit. Okay, I think it's just, it's so important. And I'm sure over the years, you, you've spoken with people. Sure. Uh, and I, I've done the same. I've had, you know, opportunities to go into the, the, the hospital and rehab centers and talk to people who have been injured. I've talked to families of people who have been injured. And, you know, I think that all stems from, um, like you said, being positive and realizing what I can do. And there's going to be work to get there, but you can still be productive and you can still do a lot of things that sure. you used to do. I remember visiting a guy, uh, he was newly injured, he was paralyzed from the neck down. And he said he could he could barely speak above a whisper, but he said to me, does it get better? And I said to him, it absolutely does, but you have to be patient. Right. And, and that's the hard that part. To help you. Like, that's right. Speak a little louder with the voice box. Or, or, or yeah, something. well. I was only there for a few minutes, and mm -hmm. I didn't know much about all that stuff, but I told him, I said, you know, your mind is going to adjust, mm -hmm. but you have to be patient enough to let it, but it does <laughs> get better. I guarantee you. Right. I think, well, you, wait, I wait, think you it's different for me because, like, I've always been disabled, and I can't remember a day when I was not. I mean, like, I walked and stuff. I had braces, but like the stages of grief for me was different because I was already in it. I didn't really, oh, why me, kind of thing. Well, sure. But then, like, the outside life of society and like, you know, uh, being alone, kind of thing, shunned out. Like that part of grief was really hard for me to get over. Yeah. But yeah. I wasn't ever like. Okay, I'm gonna nurse you. Um, I can't do anything. You know what I mean? I was always taught to like, oh, there's resources for you. You can always play sports. So, I mean, and then I learned people's grief is different, and you can't rush it. And it's, they I think, I think it. you just said something that's very important. A lot of people who might be a mentee in this peer peer uh, program, program mm -hmm. might not understand or know where to find those resources. That's right. And I think what we're doing here is we're setting up those people with people who are in the know mm -hmm. about sure. the community, oh, yeah. what's out there, what's available, what resources are there. And um, like you said, they've been there, they've done it, mm -hmm. and, and they've they overcome some help. of those issues mm -hmm. yeah. and obstacles. And, and, and now, they, else and now they can help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times they, they, you know, they're new to the world of disability. They don't know where to go to find answers. Oh, yeah. And if I was a mentor, I guess what I would say to the person is, look, if I can't answer your question, I know I'll somebody find somebody else. who yeah. can. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's important. You know what the great part? You, you, what you've said there is you've individualized what a SIL is on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. Sure. And my, what I mean by that is when I get phone calls, and I'm, I'm in a lot of networking groups, I always tell people, listen, I might not be able to help you but you better believe I know somebody who can. Yes. And then find that yeah. person. Mm -hmm. sure. And we're going to get you the help that you need. So that way they don't have to go through this this process that they may find so intimidating right. that they can't even start it. Or the frustration yeah. of this, like, oh, we've been on the phone forever. I don't know who to talk That's to. right. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. like, defeat it. You're going old and yeah. you're talking to 18 different people yeah. and you still don't have the answer. I and get frustrated. Well, you tell <laughs> the only times I've had people say, I've told the story six times already, mm -hmm. and, and nobody's helping me, nobody's helping me, and I always say, stop, mm -hmm. I'm going to help you. Yeah. I've been a chair 41 years, and I'm still frustrated by that, mm -hmm. when you have to repeat the same thing, same thing over, over and over, over again. Imagine right. someone who's new to, you know, to disability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does, if somebody wants to be a mentor, how do they go about doing it? Um, you can either call me, email me. Um, you can talk to me in person at the Consumer Wellness or any of the events. I'm also like sending out flyers and Facebook posts. So if you see that, you can always give me a call or if any of the SIL department a call to let you know you want to join. Yeah, and so then, our number our number here, uh, for anybody who's watching this who might be interested in being, who, who might want to be a mentee, who, who, yeah. who wants somebody to talk to, or you want to be a mentor who helps somebody out, sure. uh, right. somebody else out. Our number here is 814-838-7222, and all you do is ask for somebody in the, in the Center for Independent Living, 
they ask directly from Maria, they'll get it'll get uh, mm -hmm. transferred right over her. Uh, and then I'll definitely like an interview, see what kind of things you know, how you can help somebody else. Okay. And go from there. Um, <laughs> another thing is uh, a person who would who would, might want to be a mentor, they might have concerns about well, what kind of time commitment are we talking about right, here? Yeah. Is it do you expect me to do this for three to five years mm -hmm. or how many hours per week or right. what's what's the deal? For right now the program is gonna be from like a year when we start the next batch of uh, mentors and mentees. For right now, so we start in October. We okay. want this to go for a year. And then if the mentees want to be a mentor, then that's where we switch it up and then start again for another year. So this okay. will go for a year, see how the program grows, because it's brand new. Right? Sure, you know? sure. You know? so, and, how, and how often, <laughs> I think one of the other questions we're always asking mm -hmm. inside that question is how, like how, <clears throat> is the expectation that they're going to communicate once a week? So, uh, okay, so I ask them to have maybe um, two to three contacts um, over the month. And it doesn't have to be a person, but it can be on the phone, email, visual, or, email, okay. um, uh, like talking, whenever you want. Um, but then I had kind of want to have a goal of like actually getting out of the house and communicating oh, sure. outside and meeting someone. Even going for coffee. Uh, yeah. Going yeah, for coffee. That shows that you're trying to be independent and make arrangements to do something out of your house. Okay. So one thing to remember with the, with the year long thing, um, goals don't necessarily have to be a year. It, right. it might be something that you can accomplish in six months. Sure. In which case, and then each case month it might in, be different. Right. Different. It goes in as goal accomplished. Yeah. Uh, which is the ultimate goal sure. for us is to have, to have everybody's goal become accomplished. So in, other words, so in other words, within that year, you may be a mentor to two or three different people, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, but you have to put in at least a year's commitment. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes, and that's the thing. I'm trying to have people who are able to commit, but if you have a reason, I'm always working with people, so that's fine, like health issues and things like that. Sure. But okay. if you can't meet with them, you can't. Um, you can always still talk to them. So that's why I'm like, you still try to reach out to them, okay. even if you can't be at an event, still communicate it because you want someone to call you and say, hey, sure. how's your day going? Well, yeah. Are you working on your own goals? You know, Absolutely, so, yeah. So I guarantee you, and, and you probably know this as well, there's a lot of people out there who probably never talk to anybody. You're right. They sit in their apartment and they don't talk to anybody. And that's so why I'm like, great reach opportunity. out to them, yeah. I think it's a great opportunity. You have to remember the word, Peer means friendship, mm -hmm. right? We we do a lot of uh, consumer-based groups here, whether it's the art class that we have, or the consumer wellness that we have, or we're going to start a game day. Yeah. Uh, we just did a first one the other day. We do one of those every month, uh, where we are getting it's it's a larger peer support group. That that's really what those are. They're, they're larger sure. groups of friends, groups of people who have become friends over the years, and those people who are the 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 mainstays. Are very welcoming to new people. Oh yeah, and, we, and that group yeah. is getting bigger and bigger, and we're getting more people. And and the more we do, the more we get, and people are just coming. They come for the. It, it's funny. You could say they come for what we do, the activities. You could say they come for the food. <laughs> they come for everything. The reason they come, I am convinced of it. The reason they come is for the friendships. Yeah. Well, sure. Oh yeah. Now yeah, by now by games, is there like blackjack or whatever? No, it's we have to do a backdoor casino. We might be doing something me. with pennies or quarters. We, 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 you know? guys are <laughs> killing me. So I, thought, I thought I'd be shooting some no, dice no, here or no, something. Oh, no, Maria, no, come no, on. No, no, we actually had a Pictionary. We did Pictionary for a while, and we did Bingo. Pictionary was fun. I love Bingo. I don't know what it is. Well, what I suggested to them was charades. Oh, yeah. For the people who could, I mean, there's got to be ways of adapting if you don't have the arm or finger dexterity or whatever. But, I I mean, it sounds almost hokey, but, boy, we played it with my family when they came up. We had a blast. And he is getting people to buy into it. That's why we start not like the three of us sitting here. Yeah. Are, we we're more, more animated. More, yeah. 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 Well, it, it's not that we can do more, it's just that we're more animated. Okay. We'd be into it. Extroverts. Right. Other, other people are a little bit more. I'm not doing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll say yeah. I mean, some of the some of the people didn't even want to try to draw. Oh, yeah, they didn't want to even draw. pick a card. I'm like, you just pick a card. Yeah. But, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're shy. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well. Any anything else you'd like to say about the the uh, peer mentoring program? It's yeah. just brand new, so like right now I'm trying to get as many people we can just try it out, and then by the end of the year I can figure out what worked, what didn't work, what the mentees, the lights, and mentors have trouble with, okay. and then I can fine tune it and then 
have another. Thing. Maybe like maybe like conflict resolution. Yeah, if, yeah. If, Figure if out if a relationship happens. really went south for some reason. <clears throat> okay, so if didn't, somebody I mean, yeah. didn't like somebody else, or the relationship was terrible, then they have to come to me. So the mentor or the mentee come to me. And they say, I have an issue with somebody, I don't think this is going to work out, okay. then I find another one for you. It's okay. not like, okay, bye, you, you didn't work out. Right, gonna, right, I'm going to sure. find you somebody that will work out with you. Okay. 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 Well, great. And I think it's mm -hmm. a great program. Oh, I've got a lot of great work getting you it. going. And yeah. now, now it's just a matter of getting the word out so that people yes. can get involved. I think so Rob was, might be a mentor. You say. I might, yeah, I might be interested in that. Yeah, I mean, I've done the peer mentoring thing with plenty of people, so uh, you know, if there's ever a situation where I need to be used, I'll be on it too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my my degree is in rehab counseling, mm -hmm. a master's degree, so I I think I might want to do it. Yeah, yeah. it'd be pretty cool. So awesome. Okay. There's some new people too, so I can match you up because you have experience. So. Yeah. And somebody doesn't. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right, right. Well, good show. Good okay. Show. Well, thank you, Maria. Right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. One last thing I do want to mention. I mentioned it the last couple of weeks is the Medicaid renewal. Um, or last couple of months. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was on a, on a webinar today, and they said one of the most important things that you can do is call your county assistance office caseworker and update your information. And I'm talking about whether or not you moved your phone number, your email address, whatever information you have to give them. Because one of the things they're finding, especially for people who may have moved, if you moved and the, and the uh, paperwork for Medicaid renewal doesn't get to you, your chances of being uh, denied are going to be better because you're not going to have anything to send back in. So let's make sure you get those uh, addresses updated. And when you get the paperwork, send that stuff in. Uh, we don't want to see anybody lose eligibility. Uh, over a technicality like not forgetting or, or like forgetting to send paperwork back in. Um, uh, one last thing with that, if you need help, I gave you the number earlier, call us here at the yep. Center for Independent Living. Any one of us can, can you kind of walk you through and, and help you navigate that situation, uh, especially those people who may have gotten Medicaid eligible since the beginning of COVID. Maybe you don't know that you need to renew every year. Most people who have been on Medicaid for years would know yeah. this paperwork's coming every year. I know you draw that you said yeah. you got something. Yeah, it right may here. come it may come at different times of the year. Right. Like sometimes one year came in August, another this last year came in November. Right. So but it'll it'll come. Right. So yeah. it's gonna be it's a, it's an annual thing. So let's just make sure we're getting that uh, paperwork sent back in so that uh, eligibility is retained. Are you sure. able to look at the due date or no? Mm, okay. No. Okay. Unfortunately not. They should say it on the paperwork. Yeah, oh, yeah. Once they get their okay. paperwork, they'll say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. A case record number and a due date. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Maria, obviously, and that's Rob. And that's Mike over there. Yay. So have a great rest of uh, January, and we'll see you next month. Okay. Take care. See you.